Okay, so today we'll be solving problems in engineering economics and the first one here is simply more on the concept side of engineering econ and what we need to do here is to um, list six fixed costs and variable costs that can be employed in a company that is producing something like um, a chemical compound okay so what could be the possible um, fixed costs and variable costs in this problem so now for problems like this so let's have here fixed costs so ano ba yung mga if we fix natin dito sabi natin before sa definition ng fixed costs ito yung mga costs na hindi talaga siya sobrang naapektuhan ng changes sa ating mga factors so ito usually ito yung mga um, yun nga hindi, we call this fixed so hindi siya talaga nababago um not necessarily na hindi nababago pero um, medyo mag kailangan ng sobrang habang panahon or mahabang panahon just to change them. Okay. So, the first one here, kung alam natin na meron siyang certain work, itong mga to. So, the very first um, the very first element na we can consider as fixed cost here would be their salaries. Okay. So, bakit natin sinabi na salaries? Kasi una sa lahat, meron bang company na basta nagbabago-bago ng ating mga um, salaries, di ba? Hindi naman yun. Hindi naman pwede yun. At ikaw, papapayag ka na ang salary mo, paiba-iba. Pag depende sa mood ng, ano, ng supervisor mo, so, di ba? Hindi naman pwede yun. Akala mo lang wala! Pero meron, meron, meron! So, salaries, um, or salary is an example of fixed costs. Now, remember, um, in a company, if you're working under a company and usually private, or even public, no? Um, you usually have this um, insurance. So, ito yung una natin agad. I mean, pangalawa. So, pangalawa natin is insurance or insurances. Kasi, this amount is usually fixed because uh, we pay something in order to have this expected, um, let's say, payback or whatever is that um, service na possibly offer natin. For example, health insurance or life insurance. So, kung tayo madedo o kaya tayo magkaroon ng problema, nagkasakit. So, uh, this will give you um, something in return. Siyempre, in exchange sa mga fixed costs na binabayaran mo, let's say, monthly or um, semi-annually. So, it depends. Okay. And of course, um, since nga nabanggit ko yung mga binabayaran natin monthly, so therefore, one of the fixed costs na um, pwede natin ilagay dito is yung monthly rental. Now, um, Itong monthly rental, hindi naman ito ibig sabihin is yung rental ng mismong company. Kasi posible na they own their own, they have their own um, land or property. That's why hindi nila kailangan magbigay ng monthly rental. Pero posible kasi na itong mga workers natin, let, let's say for example, lalo yung mga nagbo-board lang. So ba they pay for their monthly rent sa bahay. So you can include that in the element of fixed costs under this certain scenario. Now, sa pang-apat naman natin is... Um, Kung hindi naman nagbabayad ang company natin ng monthly rental kasi they have their own property or land, then uh, you have to expect na they should be paying a property tax here. Property tax is another fixed cost because um, you have your own property, let's say yung land mo, and then um, you have to pay your fixed cost, which is the property tax in this case. So, um, we can also add um, here the um, equipment, equipment costs or the... I mean, equipment depreciation cost. So, that is the perfect term. So, let, let's let just use the equipment depreciation cost. Kasi, um, alam, na, alam naman natin na nasabi ko rin to before na um, hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon yung equipment natin is mabebenta mo siya ng same um, book value. Alam naman natin, um, meron din tayo mga gamit sa bahay na uh, if you want to sell that, um, tatawag natin na second hand. So, pag second hand, ibig sabihin nun, mas mura na siya kasi um, na-exploit na natin yung kanyang uses first hand. And then, syempre, kaya yung, yung sunod na nabibili nun is mas mababa na yung kanyang halaga. Okay? So, meron tayong depreciation cost. And usually, fixed cost siya kasi we have a certain way para makompute ang ating ang depreciation cost. Unlike yung ating mga variable cost na uh, medyo depende sa uh, a lot of factors. Okay. And I think um, the last one would be um, in line with this monthly rental, which is uh, the utility services. Or you could just say the um, utilities. 
Okay? So, yung utility services natin, for example, yung um, monthly payment natin sa um, utilities na bawa, nagbibigay sa atin ng service, for example, yung bayad natin sa pagpagawa ng mga certain machine or equipment. Now, usually naman, kung monthly monthly to ginagawa, maintenance operation natin, so basically, um, hindi mababago yung costs natin. Pero syempre, there are comes a time na iba-iba yung binabayaran natin. For example, yung ano yung buy mo mismo ng kuryente, di ba? Iba yun, depende sa consumption mo. But then again, when we talk about utility services under the fixed costs here, I'm talking about dun sa parang uh, monthly or regular maintenance natin na kaya kailangan ng service nila so you have to pay them this kind of um, fixed amount just to prov just to have their um, service na not necessarily about sa kuryente, sa tubig so we're talking about any kind of utility or service na pwedeng i-provide ng certain ter third party na um, na yun. okay so ito yung um, six elements that we can have for this problem sa so fixed costs okay now, let's uh, try to have naman yung ating variable costs. So, ano kaya yung mga posible natin na pwede mga maisagot kung tinatawag natin or inahanap natin yung variable costs. Now, for the variable costs, ang una agad natin dito is yung ating freight cost. So, kung hindi nyo, um, hindi kayo familiar sa term na freight, uh, pwede natin sabihin na ito yung delivery or shipping service or costs. Um, uh, ito kasi variable costs in a way na hindi kasi natin lagi na bibigyan siya ng um, exact uh, value, di ba? For example, yung sa Lazada. Happy New Shoes, Umi, yeah! Natin, or Shopee, di ba? Sino ba mahilig dito mag-Shopee? Though, uh, most of the time, medyo fix yung ating, ano, yung ating delivery or shipping fee. Kasi, di ba, usually, may mga around 50 plus lang yan pag ganito. Bola lang yan. Para kalaki or gantong item. Pero, um, as the item increases its size or uh, its weight, di ba, nag-iiba yung ating ano, freight cost yan or shipping fee. And that's the reason why it is called a variable cost. Kasi nga, um, depende siya dun sa ating gamit na ishiniship. Okay? And that's the same thing as um, your company shipping something to another place or another, uh, let's say, another location, syempre yung ating freight cost mag-iiba yan, depende yan sa, ano, sa item na shinship. And of course, sa gasolina, sa layo, maraming factors na consider natin. Okay. And then, um, ito yung pinakamadali matandaan dito sa variable costs. So, yung ating mga commissions. Okay. Wait. Tsaka kung tama spelling kasi baka mali ako, nakakaya naman. Okay. So, tama naman siya. Actually, uh, ito yung commissions on products. Lagyan natin ang on products para baka mali to kasi kayo makasabihin yung mga tao to. So, um, yung commission sa product. Ito kasi nag-occur usually kapag nagbebenta ka. ba? Um, usually kapag um, you're selling something. For example, nagbebenta ako ng langis na nakakapagpapasa sa lahat ng major exam. Major subject. ba? So, syempre, Pag maraming bumili sa akin, may commission ako dyan kasi syempre, um, nabenta ko eh. So, yung commission mo, ba depende yun sa nabenta mo. Kasi alam nga naman bigyan kita lagi ng commission eh, nabenta mo lang is or dalawa. So, syempre, pag laki ng commission, pag laki ng, um, I mean, pag laki ng nabenta mo na, or pag dami ng products na nabenta mo, pag laki rin siya ng commission na makukuha mo. And this falls under variable costs because depende siya dun sa nabebenta mo. So, yun nga, sinasabi lagi natin sa variable costs. Depende siya sa mga maraming elements or factors na consider natin. Okay. So, yung number three natin um, is advertisement. So, bakit kasama to sa, ano, sa variable costs, yung advertisements? So, alam naman natin na adver... Okay. So, alam naman natin na yung advertisements kasi um, depende siya dun sa um, current... Uh, sa current... Doon tao, ano ba English doon? Doon na lang sa, ano, sa current na Depende siya sa current state ng product demand Yan, sabihin natin na product demand Kasi, when your product is, hindi siya mabenta Ganun na lang, hindi siya mabenta Diba, we have to include advertisements in our, um, let's say, planning Kasi, um, hindi mabenta eh. Kailangan natin ng commercial, commercials, especially commercials, 
kailangan natin ng ganun para mabenta yung ating langis na nakapagpapasa sa board exam ay board exam sa major exam so uh, kung ganun kailangan mong um, gumasa sa mga talent fees yan kami sanay na sanay kami dyan sa mga mga talent fees na binabayaran sa amin pagka uh, nagkakaroon kami ng mga commercials hayop ka talaga ang ganda mong lalaki tsaka yung yun yung mga minomodel natin yung mga ano eh yung mga gamit ba diba? picture picture lang ng ano ng langis na nakahawak 500,000 agad. So, yung mga ganung bagay um the, the variable costs sila kasi depende yan, depende yan sa um talent fee nung um artista ang kukuhanin, depende yan sa magiging um infographics, depende yan sa execution ng advertisements kung saan bang platform siya ilalagay. So, yun nagpo-fall siya under ng variable costs. The weekend a lot with the the weekend a lot budgets for this um yung 1 2 3 natin and any variable costs pero nga um it is a case to case basis where we have to consider a lot of factors that's why these things falls fall under the variable costs okay so yung number 4 naman natin is all about um this is all about the raw material costs okay so raw material pakita ng sulat ko sorry 5 and 6 okay so um okay so yung raw material cost natin is um ito isa sa ano sa isa din sa common na variable costs natin bakit kaya ganun kasi yung ating raw material ay depende sa pinagkukuhanan natin yung kanyang pricing Siyempre, we usually have to fix this para um, consider natin na ganun lang yung presyo ng ano, maging suki natin yung buyer, diga. Pero, uh, there are cases where, nila ba, nagkaroon ng tsunami, nagkaroon ng bagyo, nagkaroon ng sobrang lamig. So, di ba, yung ating raw material, especially if they are um, vegetables or, let's say, um, meat, nagkakaroon sila ng different quality depending depende dun sa weather natin or depende dun sa certain, um, sa certain topography nung, um, nung lugar. So, with that being said, yung ating mga raw material, nagkakaroon sila ng changes dun sa ating mga presyo. Though, sometimes, sobrang liit lang. Pero, at, at still, itong ating mga changes na to is hindi natin pwedeng i-neglect. Kaya, we can say na ito yung variable costs. Not only yung raw materials natin, but also yung ating mga um, labor costs. So, yun na yung number 5. Yung ating labor costs. Okay. Nagbabago rin itong ating labor costs kasi sometimes, um, alam naman natin na yung um, halimbawa, kumuha tayo ng isang group na mag, uh, no, magtatrabaho for us, ba? And then, dun sa pagtatrabaho ng mga yon, alam naman natin na merong mga fast and efficient, meron din namang um, efficient pero mabagal. Actually, mali yun kasi pag efficient, dapat mabilis at saka ano, eh, maganda gawa. Sabihin natin na, ma maganda ang gawa, pero maganda ang gawa, pero mabagal. Tapos yung isa is, Mabagal pero mabilis Mabagal pero mabilis Mabagal pero mabilis <laughs> So yung quality ng work natin is Doon nakadepende yung ating labor costs Kaya masabi natin itong variable costs is um, um, I mean itong labor costs ay under ng variable costs Now what if yung ating labor costs um, nag Naggawa ka na sa company and then um, Phoenix natin yung ating labor costs Let's say sige ito yung babayad namin sa inyo You have to agree with these terms yung ganong case, pwede sabihin natin na nagiging fixed cost siya kasi yung company yung nag-set nung, ano, eh, nung, nung certain condition na if fix ko to, so I have to find someone who would work under this condition in terms. But if ever the company is flexible in a way na they considered how much work you've done, especially when, let's say, ang payroll mo is daily, so depende siya sa natapos mo and then the company will evaluate your, your, your work. So, pwede natin sabihin na variable cost siya kasi it depends on the current setting or the service that is being offered at that um, point in time. Okay? And I think uh, the last one would be, we could say that we have this fuel, ayun oh, na lang, fuel costs na lang para mas simple. So, yung fuel costs, alam naman natin na pag meron tayong freight costs, mag spend din tayo for our fuel for our um, transportation. So, sabihin natin na ganun. Actually, parang under pa nga ito ng freight kasi, pero, um, yun na lang yung simple natin na, ano, separate na lang natin siya kunwari, no? So, yung fuel cost kasi, alam naman natin na, um, it depends dun sa consumption ng, ano, ng vehicle mo. For example, yung vehicle mo, mas um, malakas yung kumain ng gasolina, 
So, uh, mas malaki maging ano mo, cost mo. Pero kung halimbawa, meron kang certain vehicle na hindi naman sobrang laki ng ano, ng kanyang consumption, then you have to expect that you have we will have a lesser fuel costs. So, these six would be um those elements that we can consider as variable costs. Okay? So, I think yun na muna yung concepts natin, then let's proceed to the next one which I think wala tayong mga concepts like this. Okay? Now, for this problem naman, medyo mahaba siya, no? Kaya, um, I have to read muna itong problem na to. And hopefully, basahin nyo rin siya bago natin start solving para mas um, mag-guess nyo siya um, fully. Okay? And of course, you can answer this if you want para din ma-practice kayo if ever. So, um, in connection with surfacing a new highway, a contractor has a choice of two sites. So, in short, um, magkakaroon tayo ng a new highway. So, meron dalawang options yung ating contractor. So, yung una is um, sa site A, so meron tayong asphalt mixing plant. And then yung in-estimate ng contractor, con contract, sorry, contract, contractor na it will cost 137.5 pesos per cubic uh, yard per cubic yard mile to haul the asphalt paving material from the mixing plant to the job location. So, in short, meron tayong mixing plant and then meron tayong job location. Okay, and then there are two mixing sites. So, ito yung ating mixing plant. Parang dun siya nakastay. And then, so parang meron dalawang sites and then pupunta siya dun sa job location. So, which kaya dun sa dalawang yan yung um, better option. Now, for site A, so ito yung mga details, no? For site A, meron tayong 4 miles. So, ganun siya kalayo. For site B, mas malapit 3 miles. For site A then, um, yung monthly rental dun sa site na mas malayo is 100,000 pesos. For site B, meron tayong 350,000 pesos which is mas mahal. Now, yung cost to set up and remove equipment, kasi alam naman natin na gagamitin natin yung mga equipment in that location. Tsaka, tatanggalin din natin after, di ba? So, 750,000 yun for site A. And then, for site B, meron tayong 2,500,000. Okay, so medyo talagang malaking malaki na. And then, yung hauling expense naman natin is the same lang kasi nabanggit siya dun sa first problem na, sa in first sentence. And then, yung flag person, um, medyo nag, di ba, kayo yung head kasi contractor kayo. Pero, di ba, meron kayong isang tao na pinagkakatiwala ng other duties. Siyempre, siyempre sa'yo nag-spearhead ng mga certain activities natin. So, dun sa site A, sabi, hindi daw kailangan ng flag person. Pero sa site B, kailangan ng flag person which you have to pay 7,500 per day. Medyo malaki-laki yung ano yung bayad dito sa flag person na to, ano. Now, yung job natin, nagre-require siya ng 50,000 cubic yards of mixed asphalt paving material. So, um, for all the, ano to, for both uh, sites, I mean, for yung ating mismong construction, 50,000 yung gagamitin natin, ano. And then, estimated na matatapos natin siya for 4 months, which uh, is 17 weeks and 5 working days per week. So, that is like 17 times 5, yun yung total number of um, working days. So, we need to compare this to a uh, site in terms of yung nakalagay to fixed, variable, and total costs. Okay? And then, we have to assume that the cost of the return trip is negligible. So, hindi tayo, um, di ba, napuntahan natin yung certain site from site A or site B going to that location. So, di natin ko consider yung pagbalik ng itong, itong ating trip. Na. And, tanong dito is, which is the better site? And for the selected site, how many cubic yards of paving, paving material does the contractor have to deliver uh, before starting to make a profit if paid 600 per cubic yard delivered to the job location. Okay. So, medyo marami yung tanong natin. And then, unahin natin yung unang tanong dito. So, medyo ibaba ko na tong screen ha kasi um, alam na naman natin yung nasa unang sentence. So, dito, ito yung mas important dito yung table natin. Okay. So, hopefully, kaya na natin sa na space na ito na. So, um, ang tanong sa atin is, compare muna natin daw yung site using their fixed cost. Okay. So, pag fixed cost, yung ating consider na point of view here. Alam ba ulit yung fixed cost natin, di ba? Usually, salary to, yung mga monthly rental natin. Siyempre, yung ating shipping fee, na sabi ko kanina before, yung ating freight cost, di ba? They are variable costs. Okay. So, dun muna tayo sa fixed cost natin. Okay. So, ang fixed cost dito is yung monthly rental. So, ang gagawin ko ngayon is... Hmm, sige, alalagyan ko ng... Kasi kita eh. 
lalagyan ko ng blue yung ating fixed costs. Okay, so fixed cost. Okay. And then, ano pa ba? Cost to set up and remove the equipment. So, ito is one time, big time lang to. Usually, kaya ito ay fixed cost din. So, meron tayong fixed cost din. Para ito yung ating utility service na tinatawag, no? Pero yung hauling expense natin, di ba? This one is dependent dun sa ating, ma ano yung, dependent sa ating um, average hauling distance. So, this will be variable costs. Okay. And then, how about the flag person? So, yung flag flag person natin is fixed cost din yan kasi um, salary to yun yung flag person natin no? and then yung average hauling distance so hindi natin yan isasama okay now for the fixed cost itself no kung monthly rental na 100,000 ni consider natin for site A so yung total fixed cost natin would be ibayin natin yung kulay okay so fixed cost for site A this would be equal to 100,000, di ba? 100,000 yan. And then, um, we need to um, uh, multiply this with how many months that we'll be having this. So, di ba? 4 months. So, we have 4 here for fixed cost. Okay? And then, meron pa dito for A. Meron din tayong cost to set up and remove the equipment. So, one time, big time to times, I mean, plus 750,000. And yun nga yung sinasabi ko dito sa Econ. Ano lang tayo? Add-add lang tayo. Multiply-multiply lang. Diga? Napaka basic mga ating gagawin dito. Okay. And then, wala tayong flag person for site A. So, ito yung ating fixed cost sa A. So, syempre, um, hindi ko pa to sa ulo yung mga sagot. Kaya kailangan ko mag-calculator. Okay. So, hopefully, sabayan nyo ako mag para tama yung ating sagot. Pero ito una, 400,000 na to eh. Pero syempre, dahil tayo ay um, hindi sigurado i-multiply pa natin yung support para lang makasigurado yeah, ganyan tayo mga engineers anyway so um, <laughs> ang sagot ko dito is um, 1 million one, careful kayo sa mga zero lagi ha, kasi dito tayo nagkakatalo lagi sa mga zeros okay so 1 million kung ayan, ayan kita nyo ba ang hirap pala dito ayan Anyway, so 1,150,000 yung ating fixed cost sa A. Now, yung um, tandaan na lang natin ito, no? Um, di ko na siya, ano, kasi kulang yung space natin. Kasi para to sa malalabo ang mata, eh. Okay, so yung fixed cost naman natin sa B yung aking nga hanapin. Fixed cost for B. This is equal to, ulitin natin, fixed cost lang tayo. So we have 350,000 monthly rental times 4 plus 1 time big time cost to set up ng equipment natin na 2 million tumataginting na 2 million 500,000 okay and by the way um, nga pala uh, before I continue this so medyo nakikita nyo na yung ating mga table ano sa tingin nyo yung maging sagot site A or site B so dapat hindi kayo magbabago ng choice ha habang nagsosolve tayo so um Yan, wala lang. Hindi pagtama kayo, hindi magaling kayo manghula. Pero kung mali kayo, huwag kayo manghuhula. Okay. So, plus. So, tapos tayo dito sa equipment, which is a fixed cost. Then, doon naman tayo sa flag person. So, that becomes 7,500 per day. And sabi ko nga, ilang days pa to. So, gagawin natin is 5 working days per week. And then, sa loob ng isang uh, week, I mean, meron tayong 5 days sa uh, no, meron tayong 5 days isang week and then 17 weeks natin siya gagawin so ito yung total na babayaran mo dun sa um, sa flag person natin so in short uh, if we would be um, finding the fixed cost for our site B you would be able to get so hmm. meron tayong 4 million so malaki malaki 4 million 537,500 Now, dun sa mga solving nyo, pwede kayo maglagay ng comma para di kayo malito kasi money naman pinag-uusapan natin. Kasi usually, pag uh, math, hindi tayo naglalagay ng comma kasi syempre, uh, math yun eh. Pero, I mean, math naman to, pero syempre, pag usapang pera to, kailangan nating uh, medyo uh, masigurado yung mga digits natin kasi napaka-importante nun. So, dito is, lalagyan ko ng comma. So, in short, kung kukompare natin tong fixed cost lang based on our, um, based on fixed cost. So, pag fixed cost, ang priority natin is A. I mean, A is uh, greater than B, parang ganun. 
Actually, hindi siya greater but better. So, A is a better choice than A or side A is a better choice than B because by rule number 2, natandaan natin yun sa rule number 2 na diniscuss ko before na kapag hindi natin pwedeng consider yung total cost of production, we'll just have to consider yung other variables in which kapag mas konti yun, let's say ito nga, fixed cost, kung mas konti yun, then we will have to select that. Um, I mean, di pala total cost, but total revenue, ganun. So, kung wala tayong total revenue, um, we'll, we'll consider yung mga total cost natin, fixed cost, variable cost, in order to evaluate um, um, the alternatives. And in this case, because the site A is a better, a better choice, kasi nga, um, mas mababa yung fixed cost niya, then for fixed cost, mas mataas yung, I mean, mas better yung ating A. Okay. So, um, the next question is, how about naman kung variable cost yung ating consider dito? And I'm hoping na nakakasunod kayo kasi ito ay para namang ano lang, para lang tayo dito na glolokan siya. Okay, actually, ano to, mabilis, madali lang kasi itong topic na to na. So, for variable cost naman, di ba meron lang tayo dito ng hauling expense? So, kung variable cost for A, VCA, so we have 137.5 yards um, cubic yards mile. So sabi natin ilan ba yung kailangan ng job? I mean, ang kailangan ng job. Ilan bang cubic yards of mixed alpha asphalt yung kailangan ng job? Ano din sinabi ko. Anyway, so 50,000 daw. So 50,000 yon. Pero yon ay um 50,000 yard cubic yards. Pero ilang milya ba to for site A? Di ba? Apat yon So, kailangan natin lagyan ng apat. Ngayon, hindi mo siya i-multiply sa 2 kasi hindi tayo babalik doon. So, um, isang diretso lang yun kasi syempre lang balikan mo yun. I mean, pwede mo naman siyang lagyan ng makapalagad and then uh, saka mo na siya patagin, di ba? Yung, yung pison, babalik-balik yon Pero yung, yung paglalagay asphalt, isang ano lang yun, isang diretso lang. Kung aware kayo sa ano, paggawa ng kalsada. So, anyway... So, yung sagot dito is 137.5 times. Eh, by the way, wag nyo kakalimutan yung mga, ano, mga units natin sa pera. No? Nakakalimutan ko rin siya malimit. So, anyway, um, the answer here is 2 point. Gawin ko na lang, ano, exponential kasi di nakakasya talaga dito. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, meron akong 7 um, decimal. So, that is 27,500,000 pesos. So, talagang malaking malaki pag variable costs. Now, for, ano na kaya? For, uh, for letter B or for site B, no? So, syempre, same lang din yung rate ng ating, ano, hauling expense. Pero, uh, same lang din yung ating volume. Pero, in this case, uh, mas, ano siya, mas malapit naman. So, hopefully, mas mababa yung makukuha natin dyan. So, dito is um, around 2.0625 lang naman times 10 to the 7th. So, um, meron tayo in short na 20,625,000 pesos na babayaran for our variable cost. And on the basis of variable cost, uh, we can say na yung ating better option would be alin. So, of course, that would be B. Diba? B is a better option pag variable cost kasi kung mapapansin nyo, mas mura siya compared dun sa ating naunang example or naunang site. Okay. Okay, so correction muna tayo. Yung symbol doon is supposedly greater than yon meaning B is a better option than A. So, huwag kayong OA dyan, baka mag kayo. Ay, ba't gano'n? So, um, nagkamali ako ng sulat doon, okay? So, B should be greater than A, yung symbol doon, okay? So, yun lang. Okay, go back na sa lesson. Now, knowing this, um, variable cost, pag variable cost B, mas okay. Pag fixed cost A, so ano ba talaga yung ating maging squat? Kaya dito ay sinatanong, paano pag total cost? Kasi syempre, pag total cost na, yun na yung final decision natin. Yun yung ultimatum kung ano ba yung pipiliin mo. So, di ba sabi natin, ang total cost ay equal lang sa, sa fixed cost and variable cost. Pinura ko, so ulitin natin. Hopefully, nakasave sa aking ano, Actually, hindi siya nakasave. Wala na. Finish na. So, yung fixed cost ng A and then variable cost ng A is equal to yung variable cost ng A is na-save ko siya. So, we have 2.75 times 10 to the 6 ata yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7. Okay. So, yun yung for uh, variable cost of A and then um, for ano, for Lagyan natin dito, variable cost B. FC, B. Okay. 
So, for variable cost of B, ito yung na-save ko. So, ano, gagamitin ko na lang siya. Okay. So, we have 4, 5, 3, 7, 5, 0, 0. So, meron tayong formula, 537,500. Okay. And then, yung variable cost naman nung um, B, meron din ako niyan. So, 2.0625 times 10 to the um, 7. Okay. So, 3, 6, 7. Tama. So, yung fixed cost na lang yung A. So, computein ko na lang uli siya. Uh, kasi, masipag naman tayo. So, so okay. Ito. So, hopefully, tam parehas yung nakuha ko kanina. No? Kasi, it should be 100,000 times 4 months, diba? Plus 750,000 one time, big time nga siya na cost of equipment um, erection. So, we have 1150000. So, that is around 1 million lang. Now, pag in natin itong mga to, kasi total cost eh. So, ang mangyari lang dyan, add lang natin sila, na. And then, kailangan natin makuha yung lowest price. Kasi kung ano yung lowest price, that would be the best option for this one. So, in this case, we have 2.865 times 10 to the 7 pesos. So, that is 28,650,000 for um, A. And then, how about B? So, for the total cost of B, so, meron tayong... Um, Add natin lang yung fixed cost and then variable cost. So, we have 2.51625 times 10 to the 7. Okay. So, with this being said, o, oh, kitang-kita nyo naman yan. Ang 0.8625, mas malaki siya sa 0.51625. So, therefore, ang ating pipiliin is, the better option is site B. So, ito yung sabihin ko. Alam ko marami sa inyo pumili ng site A, Dun sa ano sa sinabi ko kanina yung isipin niyo kung pag table lang. Kasi kung mapansin niyo, pag site A, pag tiningnan mo lang yung rate niya kasi 100,000 lang, 750,000 lang yung setup ng equipment. iba Parang ano, parang pag doon lang yung nakita mo, parang ay site A na agad. Pero syempre, pag kinumpit mo siya, literally makukuha mo yung site B. So, at saka ang laki nung sa difference ng site B around ano yan, around 3 million yan, ba? Kasi alam niyo ba yung nagpalaki dito sa site ano, nagpali, ano ba? Nag, nagpalaki. Nagpalaki nga sa site A. Ito kasing ano, itong um, variable cost niya. Kasi, di ba sa variable cost, depende siya sa layo. And medyo mahal yung ating payment nung hauling expense. Kasi isang mila yung layo niya dun sa, ano, eh, sa site. Kaya, uh, mas preferred pa rin dapat natin si yung site B. Which in this case, ito kasi nasa ano, 7 digit ito. So, million, I mean, 10 million digit ito eh. Pero ito, million, million digit lang siya. So, ayun. Ipiliin pa natin yung side before this. Okay? So, yun. Hopefully, mas naliwanagang kayo dito sa ating problem solving na ito. No? And then, uh, dito sa tanong natin, so which is the better site? Site B. Okay? And then, for the selected site, how many cubic yards of paving material does the contractor have to deliver before starting to make a profit if paid 600 per cubic yard delivered to the job location? So, ulitin natin yung tanong. So, sa pinili natin site, which is site B, magkano daw yung cubic yards of paving material does the contractor have to deliver? So, ano kaya yung, um, gano kaya karaming paving material yung kailangan i-deliver ng contractor? para magkaroon tayo ng profit kung binabayaran siya ng 600 per cubic yard delivered to the job location. So, in short, meron tayong total cost na 2.51625. We need to equate this to a certain um, um, to a certain um, cost multiplied by um, ito, ito yung payment niya just to get the correct ano, the correct cubic yards of the paving material. So, let's do it um, dito. So, burahin ko lang muna yung mga, ano dito, yung mga extra information natin. And let's just leave muna yung ating important for site B. Okay, so, um, naiwala ko yung, yung notes. So, um, sinulot ko na ulit dito yung fixed cost nung B natin is 4,537,500. Now, um, bakit wala yung variable cost dito? Kasi, um, tinatanong kasi dito is, um, kailan ba magkakaroon tayo ng profit? Now, alam naman natin yung profit, nag -e exist siya. Yung profit kasi nag -e exist kapag yung ating total revenue equal na to sa ating um, total cost. Parang ganon. I mean, expenses. 
ay natin, ulitin natin. So, yung ating total revenue, equal na to sa ating mga expenses. So, in that way, kapag uh, nag-exceed na yung ating revenue dun sa ating expenses, then meron na tayong profit. Okay. So, alam naman natin na... So, alam naman natin na itong fixed cost, um, di na siya mababago, kaya nga fix na siya eh. Pero if you would be um, paving your material to the to a certain location, so, syempre, for every holiday, for every material na dadalhin mo, mayroon kang hauling expense. Kaya, yung variable cost natin dito is hindi ko siya in-include in muna. So, with that being said, yung ating um, 4, 5, 3, 7, 500, nasa right side na siya na equation, bali, ito yung ating, um, actually, that pala sa left. Ito kasi ating expenses. Nagkasusa natin to, di ba? And ano pa ba yung ating other expenses? Di ba yung other expenses natin is from the variable cost which is 137.5 okay, times 3 kasi sure na yung ating 3 miles and then um yung ating hinahanap dito which is in this case yung X na yung paving material okay, na, na i-deliver natin dun sa certain location na yon. Now, equate natin to dun sa ating magiging revenue dun sa payment na ginagawa no dun sa payment ng ating um, dun sa ating ano, dun sa ating nade-deliver na asphalt. So, in short, um, for every cubic yard, nakalagay dito eh, for every cubic saan ba yun? For every cubic yards of paving material na nadadala natin dun sa site na yun, nagkakaroon tayo ng profit na 600. So, um, I mean, not actually profit, but yung kita talaga siya. So, um, gakaroon tayo ng benta na 600 pesos. So, for every cubic yard yan. So, X din siya. No? And then, by using shift so we can obtain the value of X in this um, equation. So, therefore, X is equal to, um, let me just solve it. So, um, yun 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 yung nangyayari. No? Supposedly kasi, you might be thinking na just equate this to 600 X and wag na natin itong i-consider. So, the answer would be this one 24,200 cubic yards okay so you might be thinking na awag ah, na lang i-consider tong um 137.5 it disregard natin to so hindi natin siya pwedeng i-disregard kasi um, for every punta nga natin dun sa certain location na yon gumagastos din tayo eh sa ating hauling expense kaya nga siya variable cost and remember yung ating total um revenue should equate our total cost so tama pala yung sinabi ko kanina expenses kasi yung total cost natin na ang equivalent nito would be our fixed cost plus variable cost so yung atin dito is ito yung fixed cost 4 million and then yung variable cost dito is ito pero syempre yung ating revenue dun natin siya kukuhanin dun sa um, 600 pesos na dinadala natin pag nagdala tayo ng certain cubic feet amount of asphalt na yun din yung dinadala natin dito from our um, truck so, I hope na-guess nyo yun. Parang nangyayari. Nadala ka ng certain uh, material. Okay. So, yung certain material na yun is may freight cost siya kasi nga um, gumagamit ka ng gasolina for that. So, yun yung 137.5. Then, binibenta mo yun dun sa, ano, sa, or ginagamit yun dun sa certain location for other purposes. So, ang bayad sa'yo is 600 for that. So, um, yun yung ating, ano, uh, reasoning for that. And of course, yung 137.5, kasama na dun yung mga fuel expenses, yung mga um, pag siguro yung mga um, possible na problema when you're trying to deliver your product. Okay? So, yun yung ating sagot dito. So, actually, marami tayong sagot dito. Which is better site? Site B. Okay? And uh, for the selected site, you have to deliver 24,200 cubic yards of paving material to be able to get a profit. And actually, pag na-deliver mo yon, hindi ka pa talaga meron, wala ka pa talagang profit dun eh. Dun ka pa lang mag start magkaroon ng profit. So, basically, pag umincrease dun, edi, um, yun na yun, magkakaroon ka na ng profit. Okay. So, let's move on to the next item. Okay. So, for number uh, 3 naman tayo, no? Merong company na nagpo-produce ng electronic timing switch that is used in consumer and commercial products. Okay, and then the fixed cost. So, ito yung ating fixed cost. Sulat ko lang dito, no? So, yun yung ating fixed cost. And then yung variable cost natin. 
is 4,150 per unit. Okay. And then yung sabi dito, selling price is given in terms of um, demand. Okay. So, para naka-demand function siya. And uh, the question is, for this situation, letter A, we need to determine the optimal volume for this product and confirm that a profit occurs. So, instead of a loss, at this demand. Okay. So, ano ba yung optimal volume? So, pag sinabi natin optimal volume, we will be doing optimization in this case. And, and then, finally, we need to find the volume at which the break even occurs. That is, what is the range of profitable demand? So, yun yung um, next question natin. And, um, so, ganun gagawin natin ngayon dito. Ano? Okay. So, um, again, um, Profit yung pinag-uusapan natin dito kasi optimal volume ng product eh para magkaroon ng profit. So, in short, we're talking about profit here. And again, sinabi ko nga kanina dun sa ating problem solving na ang profit natin, to, to have a profit, no? Kailangan yung ating profit, or let's just say na profit ay yung ating capital P. So, capital P should be um, greater than zero, Okay. And you can obtain this from the equation na uh, it should be greater than, I mean, the equation is obtained from um, the total revenue minus the total costs, okay? And of course, kung ito yung ating formula, then we know that the profit would be um, our, this one, the fixed cost, okay, plus, of course, the variable cost. And usually, itong capital CV, ito kasi small CV ito eh. Yung capital CV is usually represented yan dun sa CV na maliit per unit times the number of unit. Okay? So, and then the selling price per unit is uh, this um, certain um, equation in terms of demand. So, um, since kaya yung CV natin is hindi siya given in terms of, as, as in CV talaga siya. So, ang gagawin natin, ira-represent natin siya in terms of um, small C. Oops, mali. I represent natin siya in terms of small CV, which is per unit to. And then we multiply this by the unit, the price per unit. So, joke. By uh, the number of units, sorry. By the number of units. So, um, we be, will be using um, uh, D here. Okay? And then, of course, um, yung profit natin, di ba? Yung profit natin, makukuha natin siya depende sa nabenta natin. So, yung nabenta natin is, di ba, yung number of units, which is usually yung demand natin. So, times the selling price. So, that will be our, um, that will be our selling price. So, this is equal, which is yung pin natin, this is equal to the demand times 9,000 minus D. Okay? So, I hope it made sense na yung D natin dito is yung the number of, um, nabenta natin, which in cases like this, alam naman natin na nabenta mo siya. So, technically, that is the demand. Kasi, parang ano yun eh, parang nagre-reflect yan dun sa benta mo. Habawa, nakabenta ka ng 5,000 items. So, therefore, yung demand dun sa, uh, sa nangyaring yun, 5,000 din. Pero, it doesn't really mean na yung total demand would be just that. Okay? So, it doesn't mean na yung, um, yung demand talaga na yun is just 5,000. That's why itong equation na to is in terms of demand. Pero, um, kaya ito, itong demand na to, it means na ito yung general demand tinutukoy. Pero in this case, in this equation, pwede natin gamitin siya just to give um, the um, the correct expression for the profit. So, um, plug in natin ngayon yung mga um, certain values nito ang ating mga um, costs natin. So, we have 3,650,000 for the fixed cost plus CV which is 4,150 per unit. So, the number of units sold will be times D, okay? And that is equal to D times 9,000 minus D, okay? And sabi dito, optimal volume of the product para magkaroon ng profit. So, di ba magkakaroon ka ng profit kung halimbawa uh, mag, magkakaroon ka ng um, net which is actually equal to or um, greater than zero. So, what we'll have to do here is to um, differentiate this in terms of the demand. Okay. So, um, let's have this. This will be zero. Uh, let's just um, differentiate this with respect to the demand. Okay. So, this would be zero plus 4,150. Okay. That is equal to, divide, this one is 9,000D. So, this becomes 9,000. Pag differentiate mo, oh, um, 
let's just use ano na lang product rule so d times the derivative of this 9000 minus d would be negative 1 plus 9000 minus d times positive 1 okay so sana tandaan nyo pa yan ha okay so knowing this equation we can now um, solve for the value of the demand or the number of products so that's for 150 equate natin sa d um Okay, so hindi ko na ipapakita yung paano nagka-calculator dito kasi marunong na kayo naman nito eh. So, siguro dun sa ibang ano na lang kung hindi natin, kung hindi nyo kayang isolve siya. So, the answer here is 2,425 units. Okay? So, in short, in short, you have to sell this amount just to get the optimal um, volume of the product. Now let us um, confirm if we really have um, hindi tayo mayroong loss or profit talaga ito. No? So, um, gagawin natin is take natin yung total revenue. And diba, yung total revenue natin is simply the um, this price per unit times the number of units. So, para siyang P times D. And in this case, 9,000 minus D yung atin. So, if you have 9,000 minus 2,425, then that's our um, selling price per unit and then um, we multiplied it with the number of the units that we have produced so uh sold pala so this gives your your this gives you your total revenue that is equal to 15944375 so this is 15 million and 144375 now how about your adding total cost so diba yung total cost is fixed cost add mo ngayon itong 4150 times 2425 units so 3650 um, 3 million, let's just use um, 3 million 0.65 to the 6, okay so, pag um, kinuha natin yung ating total na um, cost for production, so you'll be getting 13 million 700 um, 713,750 okay, so and this is greater than dito sa ating total cost of production so, this is equal to your total expenses or total cost Okay, so with that being said, uh, meron talaga tayong profit. So I hope na no, nag-guess nyo ko siya kung saan ko ito pinagkukuha. No? Ito, kinuha ko siya sa PD. So yung ating P is this one, 9,000 minus D, and then times the D which is 2425. So ito yung maging sagot dyan. This one is from the CF. So add mo lang yung fixed cost and variable cost. When yung variable cost mo is 4,150 times the number of units that you have sold. And hopefully, makuha nyo ito maganda sagot. And with that being said, um, napatunayan natin ngayon na yung ating optimal volume 2425 would be um, would be profitable enough. Okay, so usually since uh, nakuha natin yung optimal volume based on sa ating, at kung mapapansin nyo naman itong ating um, equation ng selling price multiplied with the number of unit, this gives you a parabolic curve, di ba? So basically kung meron tayo halimbawang... Um, I think number 2 na yung gantong explanation pero sige, um, let's do number 2. So we just know na 2425 yung ating um, optimal volume. That means na dyan tayo magkakaroon ng pinakamalaking tubo sa pagbabenta ng ganyang amount ng ating product. Okay, so um, 2425. So now, um, let's try naman yung number 2. We need to find the volumes, dalawa to ha, volumes, at which break even occurs. So, alam naman natin na yung break-even, nangyayari siya kapag nag-zero yung ating profit. So, therefore, if this is true, then yung ating um, total fixed cost plus the variable cost, um, this should be equal to the total revenue. Kasi this makes sense na yung ating profit is actually equal to um, zero. So, we know very well that the profit is equal to zero. Okay. Kasi, di ba, profit again is yung total revenue minus the total cost. So, therefore, if this is equal to zero, then mag equal to dalawang to. Okay? So, with that being said, yung ating fixed cost is 3,650,000. Okay? Then, yung variable cost natin is 4,150 per unit. So, I'll just use D to represent the number of units that must be sold para mag-break even. Okay? And then, this is equal to the selling price of that unit so 9,000 minus D per unit and then the number of units that will be sold will be T okay so that's why this is your total revenue now sabi dito kailangan mag zero yung ating profit so with that being said hanapin natin yung value ng dito and we know quite well na since this is um 
ano siya, naka d squared so meron tayong two values of this so um, let's just compute it using your calculator and I'm hoping na maroon na kayo mag solve ng ganito ano lang naman to shift solve and then since dalawa sila you can just use your memory just to um, lipat lipat the values okay so I'll be using the positive value muna no? so d is 931.476 um, and by the way um, I'm thinking na positive din makukuha natin isa ka para maging real yung ating demand Kasi pag negative, syempre wala naman tayong negative product eh. Okay. So, this is D1 and then yung D2 natin is, um, so, check ko yung mas mataas na value. So, diba sabi natin kanina, optimal volume is 2425. May nakuha kong isang demand, 931 lang. So, 931 items. So, therefore, kung totoo na may optimal volume tayo na 2425, basically, yung isa pa natin demand should be greater than that. So, um, um I will be using 2500 as the memory just to check on the other one and then there you have it is 3918.5277 units okay so in short i have 932 units okay and of course 3919 units so, ni-round up ko siya kasi alam nga namang produce tayo ng ano, 0.47 tsaka 0.5. So, this one is actually, ano siya, this one is actually um, rounded down supposedly. Pero, um, kung ang goal mo is magkaroon ng profit, kailangan natin increase pa dun sa demand na to kasi this is just having a profit of zero which is break even. So, if you will be um, selling 931 items only, then you're at a loss. Kaya dapat 932 yan as well as this 391. I'm sorry. Uh, now this one, it is three three nine one. Um, this should be three nine one eight. So rounded down naman siya. Uh, explain ko na kayo yung curve. So yung ating kasing curve ng demand is kung tatatanda niyo sa aking discussion, uh, di ba parang parabolic siya so ganyan siya eh, di ba? So ito yung inyong um volume ng demand volume. Gawin natin din na lang siya. Okay, so gawin na lang natin tong D. Okay, at ito yung iyong revenue. So R yun, or total revenue, kung gusto yung total revenue. Huh? So total revenue, nagkakandaloko-loko na yung pen ko. Anyway, so total revenue. So yung ating optimal volume, which is, di ba revenue to? So ito yung may pinakamalaki kang revenue. So makukuha mo yun pag na-meet mo yung 2425 na, ah, optimal volume which is yon na solve natin kanina kasi itong isang line na to this is your um another line that gives you your profit the, the term is profit and the losses so itong shaded area or region na to ito yung tinatawag natin na range of profitable demand so dito sa portion na to this is your d1 and this is your d2 and then yung d dito na na-compute natin kanina na 2425 ito yon meron tayong maximum profit dito diba pero dito um, sa portion na to uh, losses pa yan pero when you start meeting this first demand 931 or 932 units you'll start to have profit kung pa profit ka hanggang doon ma-reach mo yung 2425 na maximum profit mo and then medyo magde-decrease na yan up to the point na pag nag-increase ka pa ng production magkaka-loss ka na kasi lalampas ka na dun sa ating determining line na to now um, if you go back to your module actually ayun pa kayo dito eh, kasi kita nyo yung ano yung solution but anyway i mean solution yung sinulat ko kanina but um kung mapapansin niyo ito yon sinasabi ko diba ito yung cost and revenue na ating curve and then ito yung ating total cost so ito yung naglilimit dun sa ating ano yung total cost natin so anyway so ito yon and then profit mo tong um kino-consider natin dito sa other dito sa ating, sa ating um shaded region so with that being said um yung itong region na to is D1, D2 and then yung D natin kaya um, pag nag-exit ka pa dun um, lost na yung atin so hindi ka na magkakaroon ng profit so in short, yung inyong sagot dito the range of the profitable demand would be 932 to 3918 units okay so ito yun okay, so I hope uh, malinaw yun sa problem solving na to it's just that um, kung, profit, kung optimal volume, you have to find the equation of the profit and then differentiate it, set it equal to zero. 
kapag naman ang hinahanap natin is uh, yung ating um, range of profitable demand so you can just um, you can just simply ano, you can just simply find the values of D and then um, yun pag nahanap mo na yung values of D then you can just ano, round up pag lower portion ng demand and then round down kung dun sa end ka na nung inyong demand okay kasi if you try to use 3919 uh, I'm sure na maglolos ka na dyan pero pag 931 loss pa rin yan so um, pudun tayo sa loob ng pasok tayo may profit pa rin tayo okay hopefully na gets na siya